Hello people and welcome to a Father's Frontier Tips video. Uh, today I wanted to run through something of, of what I guess you could call a meta crop rotation. Indeed the size of the fields and just a way to keep your food stocks uh, insanely high. And then during this video as well we'll also run over some other tips of how you can kind of maximise food production and also reduce spoilage by quite a bit as well. There's some good tips in this video for that. But otherwise let's just get straight into it. Uh, so... In terms of actually growing your crops, of course, it depends what you need. If you're in need of making more clothing, then you know, grow flax. But we're going to sort of put in a rotation of every type of crop in this video to sort of show you how you can maximize it to its best potential, at least for each type of food anyway, like vegetables, etc. Your crop size um, should be at 10 by 10 fields. And I'm going to draw in four of these. So again, obviously you want to be looking for high fertility areas as well which you can actually toggle the heat map of pressing F on your keyboard and it will bring up sort of the fertile spots that you've explored around your current city. So, you know, just find a suitable place. And um, also, please ignore where the compost shard burns down. Um, a good place to place these or indeed place your barn afterwards uh, is to actually place it near a barn because we're going to be using the cows to fertilize the fields as well. But we'll get to that in a second. So just go ahead and build yourself four 10 by 10 fields. I'm leaving a space for a road to come through in between just to help maximize sort of travel times and whatnot and of course my city will expand past this as well and try and keep it quite modular as well you know in terms of 10 by 10 as your population grows of course this system will eventually become too strained so it's a case of you add on another set of 10 by 10 fields and then just keep it scaling with your city so these will take a little while to build up so i will be back once they have okay guys so we now have our four crop fields uh set up I have purposely crippled my town's food store here. This is just a little test map that we sort of try things out on. Uh, so we can sort of see the effect that this has here. So once you have your crop fields in, you will of course be greeted by the sign that the crop currently has empty seasons. So when you first set these crop fields up, chances are their fertility can be a little bit off. Also, they have uh, high weed levels as well. So really for kind of the first three years, you want to do a rotation of peas. You're then going to do clover and then maintenance and repeat this for the first three years that you do these fields. So the peas are going to give you a slight boost in fertility, which is always good. Of course, then the clover is going to do exactly that. That's not a food producing crop. It's going to boost the fertility. And then again, the maintenance at the end will bring the weed levels down. Just run this for the first three years. Like I said, you'll get a little bit of food, you know, get food from elsewhere like fishing and hunting. So once you have these set up, just let it run for three years or so. So it goes through one full cycle. And then you'll see come the end, you know, so this is a brand new field here, has 63% fertility, 85% weeds, 13% rocks. If we have a look at a field that's had this running for a little while, we can see the fertility is going up now. Weeds are right down as is rockiness. So again, once you've done that, you know, let it run, get your fertility as high as possible and weeds as low as possible. And then we can have a look at how the actual crop rotations function. So once you have let these run for three years to uh, get your field stats to the highest they can possibly be, don't forget, you can also boost fertility uh, with a compost yard, of course, which you'll be using. You can come and add a rotation onto this that will fertilize the field. And then once you have your barn nearby as well, you can actually set the grazing area. And then you want to set this on a field once it is in its clover season. It, the cows will come in and eat the clover, and then they will, of course, crap all over the field, and it will really boost the fertility. But that is dependent on whether or not you have cows yet. It's waiting for the trailer to come in with them. So you'll have to wait uh, a little bit past the early game in order to get them. But let it run and then we'll come back with our optimum crop rotations. Okay, so once you have run your peas, clover and maintenance cycle for three years and gotten your fertility and weed levels up to an acceptable level, anything above 70% is good to start with. It's just going to help increase the yield factors. And of course, don't forget to build a compost yard nearby too. So you can continually dump compost into your field. It'll keep boosting fertility. However, the first three rotations we're going to talk about here are going to be fertility positive rotations. So you don't need to worry about keeping compost in them or switching them back out for peas, clover and maintenance cycles. But anyway, this first one we'll have a look at is a high fertility green and beans rotation. You'll get a ton of greens and beans that will last through the winter with this one. And it will also continually grow your fertility bar as well. So in order to do this one, you want to start out with some peas, maintenance and then clover. Okay, so this is going to help boost fertility and then you've got your maintenance cycle in there to kill the weeds. After that, you want to do another clover cycle and then some cabbage. And then we're going to slightly offset this to ever so slightly later in the year. 
And then in the third year, we're going to do some cabbage and then we're going to do some beans and we're going to move them slightly further back as well. So this rotation here will be fertility positive. You don't need to worry about the fertility in this field anymore. Of course, keep your eye on the field for diseases. If you get anything that affects cabbage, you'll need to switch it out and let the field rest for a little bit. And then obviously don't forget to come in and set the soil mixtures uh, for the appropriate plant as and when needed. Just so you get that extra target soil bonus, just going to help bring in a few more plants. So this is a very high fertility greens and beans rotation. You're going to get all those foods in and keep everyone nice and fed. The next rotation here is a high fertility flax rotation. So of course flax is not going to produce food. It's used for making clothes, which of course will keep your builders happy. And then you can also sell it at the trading post as well for gold. And then use that to buy more food if you like. But the rotation we're going to start out with again is beans maintenance and then clover. This is going to add fertility to the field alongside maintaining any weed levels. And then for the next two cycles, you just want to do clover and then flax. We're going to slightly offset this later into the year. And then again, at the end, we're going to do clover and flax again. So of course you can offset this in other fields if you want to have flax production in year one, but you will produce a ton of flax from this field. And it's also going to be high fertility as well. And again, it's a rotation that you don't need to worry about the fertility. It will maintain itself all year round. So this next rotation for the leeks is fertility neutral, meaning that the fertility will maintain itself. It won't go up or down. So you want to make sure that you're at least 70% beforehand. Again, which you can do using the peas maintenance and clover rotations to get it to a high fertility and low weed level. So for our peas, we are going to again do the peas, clover and maintenance rotation in order to maintain the field. And then again, we're going to do a clover followed by leeks right at the end of the year for both of them and slide these down. This is a good rotation. If you need to get a lot of greens, uh, leeks are super productive. If you have a look at the stats, this is a good rotation to have in your non producing grain and wheat fields. Uh, it just produces you a lot of greens that will last through the winter. Just make sure you have over 70% fertility for this because of the leeks. Otherwise you're not going to be getting the most bang for your buck out of them. And then again, once everything is in, don't forget to go ahead and set your soil mixtures for the crop as well. Now we will have a look at the root vegetable rotation, which of course is going to produce you root vegetables. Uh, we're going to start out with uh, some turnips and then some maintenance, finishing the year off with a little bit of clover. Then in year two, you're going to do some carrots followed by clover. We're going to stagger these a little bit later into the year as well. Then we're going to finish off year three with two doses of turnip and then again, some clover. Please remember again, this is a fertility neutral rotation. So above 65% and again, if you want to get it higher, replace one of the years with the peas maintenance and clover rotations or indeed top it up with compost to get the most bang for your buck out of the root veg. But this will provide you a lot of it and it's also spoilage resistant too. And if you do have the glass making and preserving industry set up, then you can then can and sort of pick all these root veggies, which will make them last a ton longer, but it'll give you a lot. And again, don't forget, top up your soil mixtures to match each of the crops. The last crop rotation that we'll have a look at here is going to be a sustained rye. So this one will have a very slight drop in fertility each year. So you have to go now, uh, compensate this one with a little bit of compost, but just make sure you keep on top of that and this will be absolutely fine for you. In the first year, we're going to put a clover and then some rye. And we're going to bring this right towards the end of the year. Then in year two, we're going to do the classic maintenance period again, which is going to be, of course, beans, maintenance and clover. And then again, finishing the third year with the clover and then the rye at the end of the year. Like I said, this will produce a ton of grain for you, which you'll be able to uh, manufacture into uh, flour at your windmill and also keep your brewery stocked as well, because that needs wheat also. We'll also look at another configuration for grain production. However, this one is fertility negative. So you will need to supplement the field every two years with compost. Otherwise, your fertility will drain away. But if you want to use this one, then you can do clover and then uh, rye towards the end of the year. And then you're going to do maintenance and then rye over this side. And then the third year, you're going to do leeks and then clover. You can, if you want to switch out the rye for wheat here, if you want to get more grain. However, if you do that, you will need to fertilize this field every single year. Otherwise your fertility will disappear. So it's up to you which configuration you want to use. I would opt for the rye just because it's not as much of a fertility drain and it also is a lot more resistant to disease than wheat but if you want to use that other configuration then you can so now that i have these five fields set up i'm going to let the game run for the rest of the year and then we'll come back and see what our food stocks are looking like and then we'll also run over some other tips of 
reducing spoilage and maximizing harvesting as well. Okay guys, so we're about to head into winter now with seven months worth of food behind us. Now, we'll just have a little look at some of the numbers. Uh, so our flax is harvesting really nicely. Uh, over in our leek fields, uh, we've harvested more than we've planted. You know, 2,450 uh, were put in the ground. 2,518 were pulled out. Likewise, again, uh, with our carrots, got a really high yield rate on those, more than 100%. And then same thing again with our cabbages from the cabbage field with the beans in there too. Then also over on our wheat field, you know, we've produced an absolute ton of wheat, again, more than we planted, uh, thanks to that high fertility. And of course, all that gets dumped uh, into our granary, which is actually full right now. And it's got maximum amount of grain inside there, which is then being fed into the windmill, which of course then in turn produces flour, which can then be turned into bread. So just the endless cycle of sort of crop rotation, right? It's really cool. And as your settlement grows, you can just, you know, go ahead and draw out another five 10 by 10 fields and then alternate your yearly rotations. So for example, what we could do now, if we decided that we needed more wheat right now, I don't because my granary is full and the windmill has more than enough to take care of. I could go ahead and draw out another 10 by 10 field, do the exact same plantations here, but this time maybe set year three in the next field to have wheat growing in there or rye, and then have the maintenance period in that other field happen in year two. So it's offset with your other grain field. I hope that makes sense. Again, we mentioned earlier about keeping a hunter's cabin nearby to your walls because deer will constantly want to uh, come near this thing. Just to try and eat your crops. See, we had 130 crops eaten by wildlife here during the year. Uh, which was that one? That was for the leeks, wasn't it? Yes, it was. So we lost 130 leeks, which isn't really that bad because leeks have a really high yield. But as the trade-off for that, the local hunter's cabins have produced 250 meat and the other one has produced 250 as well so to lose 130 leeks for basically 500 meat which is an entire cow that's what you get for slaughtering a cow and um, is really good so it's up to you if you want to go ahead and do that it's a little bit cheesy you know and because this game is early access a lot of these crop rotations that we've talked about today in these five fields they could be patched for example you know in the next update they might increase the uh, fertility impact of rye which would make this crop rotation sort of, you know, not as fertility resistant and you would have to fertilize more or, you know, switch it out for more maintenance cycles and things like that. Uh, when you do get a disease in a field, this will happen from time to time and it's something you do need to keep an eye on. Uh, just have a look what it's affecting. So turnips and cabbages. I'm about to come up to a period where I'm going to plant turnips and cabbages. So what I might want to do here is actually switch the maintenance year into that next cycle just to let the field rest. So we'll plant some beans and then maintenance and clover. So we'll just let the field rest and then we'll come back in again with those clovers and cabbages and then let the greens field sort of pick back up again, if you like. Further things you can also do to reduce your spoilage rate is to make sure that you have barrels in your root cellar. Uh, to make barrels, you need to come into storage and under tier two, uh, you will see a building called the Cooper. These will make the barrels for you. You do need iron ingots and planks to make them. These will eventually store up over here as well. Uh, another thing you can do to help reduce your spoilage is to actually come over to your markets and not allow them to store any food. Uh, this will really reduce the spoilage rate. You'll be surprised how much food you can lose to spoilage at a market if people don't buy it. They will still come and buy other things and you won't really notice a dramatic uh, difference to your income. Uh, we'll have a little look at this in a minute so you can see that this market that's been storing all of this food for us, we're going to untick it. So this market isn't allowed to sell food. We've earned 121 gold in the last year. We'll come back and see how much this is earned without stocking food. So what this will do is just force all your food to be stored in root cellars. Of course, make sure that you have enough storage in them and enough root cells around the town. Another slight maximization you can give to your food as well is to also relocate any blueberry bushes that you find near to your forager shack. You will be able to sort of go along the coastline and see a blueberry bush here. The little house with the arrow next to it in the top right allows you to relocate the bush should be noted this can only be done with blueberries if you click on a hawthorn for example or the other type of uh, i think it's a sumac is it the other type of berry that you can forage i don't think i can see one here no we can't but yes you can only relocate the blueberry bushes so it's a very slight buff to the efficiency of your forager shack having the berries right behind her it's kind of useful in the early game in the late game you won't really notice that much difference with that Another thing you can also do to help boost your fertility is if you do have cows, 
You do need to wait for the trader Anders Plains Rider to come into your trading post in order to get your first cow. Up first two cows, I guess, and then you can start to breed them to create your own population. But once you do have cows, you can set the grazing area and you can actually put this over your fields. And this is a really good idea to do during your clover seasons because the cows are going to come over, eat what's on the ground, and then, of course, crap all over the ground, which really helps boost your fertility. So if you want to micromanage it a little bit more and sort of help boost the fertility outside of those maintenance years, which, of course, are the uh, peas, clover and maintenance, then you can set the grazing. It's, again, it's a helpful little boost. It's not essential, but it can help you maximize a little bit more as well. So again, just continuing to let the game run for a little bit longer. Uh, it can also be noted that planting turnips in the middle of summer uh, in this fourth field that we do does result in a little bit of uh, crops lost due to heat stress. This, of course, can be exacerbated when you get summers with a heat wave, which isn't every year, so it kind of offsets itself. But, you know, even with the uh, crops lost to heat stress due to the high fertility of all the clovers and the maintenance in here, and obviously fertilizing too, you know, we're still harvesting more than we planted, even with uh, the heat stress in there too. And then if we have a look at our market now, see it's dropped from like 160 gold to 132 without selling food. So all that food is now uh, sitting in our storage units, like in the root cellars over here. And likewise, again, with those uh, deer, we've only lost 22 crops to wildlife and the farmers and everyone else and the hunter continues to scare them away. So we're trading off 22 leeks for 150 meat plus the pelt and the tallow. You know, don't be worried too much about the warnings. The trade-off you're getting from the extra meat is by far worth it. So the grain from our rye field here has actually filled up at the first granary. So I've gone ahead and built in another one too. And what you can also do to further increase the efficiency, or not the efficiency really, but the productivity of the apiary, um, is to actually place them in and around your farm fields, especially where you get the higher honey bonus. I place a few of these in because beekeeping isn't its own profession within the game uh, your farmers will actually tend to these apiaries when they're in around your farms and because farms are usually high fertile areas and give you a good honey bonus then you're going to be making a lot more wax and a lot more honey as well and we can also see that even outside of its rotation year at our flax field and um, because of the amount we produce due to the fertility maintenance we did at the start of the video uh, that our weaver building uh, with four people working in it is still maintaining a storage of flax which indeed is giving us the ability to sell those at the market and of course keep happiness high uh, with the clothing mechanic as well i will leave a link down below uh, to the father's frontier farming uh, page where you can find out loads more information on farming uh, alongside some further crop rotations as well maybe if you want to specialize uh, a little bit more into root vegetables and there's rotations you can do for that but i've had a ton of success with this setup you can see now with all the tips that we've looked at today, we're maintaining a decent amount of food storage uh, all year round. It, we don't really get the uh, food shortage warning anymore. And we can see where we're farming the deer coming into the farm just by leaving them a little bit of a gap between a building. So it, it's kind of stupid. I imagine this is going to be patched because this is like a serious meat farm, especially if you keep placing more and more hunters cabins around this thing. It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> so this will probably get patched, but you can do it if you want. A little bit cheesy. Uh, but please leave comments down below as well on your guys suggestions for uh, increased food productivity in farthest frontier it's definitely sort of the thing you've got to keep on top of the most alongside stuff like defenses but this has worked wonders for me i don't really have food shortage anymore so uh, let me know what you think of it and again let's fill the comments with suggestions and tips and ideas of how we can further maximize the food production in farthest frontier but otherwise i'd like to thank you all so much for watching and as always enjoy the rest of your day